Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is Great Kindergarten, Sunlight and Weather, Lesson 2.2, .2, Learning More About Models. For today's lesson, you don't need any materials. You just need your smart science brain. Are you having a good day? I'm having a great day because it's warm and sunny here in Seattle today. Are you ready to do some science? Awesome! Let's go. Okay, welcome back. Do you remember the last lesson with Ms. Diaz? She told you all about the warming model and how we're going to use it to investigate if sunlight shining on a surface causes a surface to be warm. She told you about the parts of the model. Remember, there's a lamp, there's a rubber mat, and there's a thermometer on top. Remember that the model is going to be showing us the difference between nighttime and daytime. So if the lamp is turned off, that's going to represent nighttime because there's no sun shining. And if the lamp is on, that's going to represent daytime like the sun is shining. Remember that we're investigating this question. Why does Earth's surface get warm? Do you remember what the word surface means? Tell me. If you don't remember, that's okay too. The surface of something is the outside of it. So for example, I have a remote control right here. This outside part of it is the surface. And on my pen, the plastic tube on the outside is the surface. We're gonna be talking about the Earth's surface. So. The Earth's surface is basically like the ground and the water and whatever else you can walk on when you go outside. Okay, so here's where I set up the investigation. Let's take a look. I set up two different lamps. Do you see them? I set them up at exactly the same height because the investigation wouldn't be fair if one of the lamps was closer and one of the lamps was farther away. We want to set up the investigation to be exactly the same on both sides. Do you see the rubber mats? I made sure they were the same size and the same color. I also put a thermometer in the same place on both mats. Here's what the thermometers looked like when I began the investigation before I turned the lamp on. Let's take a look at the temperature. On the left side, the temperature is marked as 22 degrees. Look at the thermometer on the right side. It's marked as 22 degrees also. Are they the same or are they different? Yeah, they're the same. They're both sitting in the same room and they're both the same temperature. Now, 22 degrees. Let's make a prediction right now. A prediction is when we try to guess what's going to happen in the future. I want you to look at the screen. Here it says not shining. This lamp is turned off. Over here it says shining. This lamp is turned on. See, you can see the little rays of light shining down in this picture. Which of these two situations, not shining or shining, do you think will end up with the warmest temperature on the thermometer? Point to the screen and make your prediction now. Hmm, interesting prediction. Now, we wanted to find out if the, your prediction is correct. So look carefully at this photo. I turned the lamp on on this side. Do you see that this lamp is on and it's shining on the thermometer? On the other side, I left this lamp turned off. It's not shining. So which side did you predict would have a warmer temperature? Where the lamp is on or where the lamp is off? Okay, well, let's see if our observations match our prediction. 
These two photos show us the measurement on the thermometers after I let the light sit on for one minute. On the left over here, you can see the thermometer that was under the shining light. What number is it at? Yeah, 32 and 34 are both kind of lit up. So it's somewhere between 32 and 34. Look over here at the side where the lamp was turned off. What numbers are lit up? Yeah, this thermometer is showing us 22 to 24 degrees. So which of these two is warmer? Point to your screen to the thermometer that is showing the warmer temperature. Yeah, it's this side where the lamp was turned on. Now we're going to do something that all scientists do. We're going to organize our data by putting our observations together on a graph. Scientist Kate, you might be asking yourself, what is the purpose of a graph? Great question. Graphs are used to organize data so that we can look at it and make sense of it. it makes it easier for our brains to understand it and figure it out. So let's talk about the parts of the graph first. Take a look at this graph over here. We can see that it has a title, almost like a book has a title. And the title tells us what the graph is about. This is the warming graph. Does that make sense? We've been studying how different surfaces get warmed up. So we're gonna call this the warming graph. Great title. Down here across the bottom, we have the two different situations we set up. We have the light not shining and we have the light shining. Okay, and then up this side where you see the rainbow of colors here, do you know what this word says? It starts with a T. It means hot or cold. Do you remember the word? Temperature. So this is showing us temperature. Now, what temperature did we record when the lamp was turned off? Let's go back to our data. Here's our not shining data for when the lamp was turned off. What numbers should we have on our graph? Say them out loud to me. Yeah, we know that on the lamp that was not shining, the temperature was 22 to 24 degrees. Now we only wanna mark one number, so we're just gonna put it somewhere in between 22 and 24 degrees. Are you ready? Watch the graph and I'm gonna add the bar that shows the right temperature. Whoop. You see how I made the bar stop sort of in between green and yellow? That's because on this, the numbers are right here between green and yellow. So I wanted our thermometer reading to perfectly match what I put on our graph. So there it is. Does that make sense to you? Awesome. Now let's do the side where the lamp was shining. Let's go back and look at our data. Here's where the lamp was shining. What numbers are lit up on this thermometer? Yeah, 32 to 34. So the temperature was somewhere in between 32 and 34 degrees. Now, what color does the bar need to go up to? Yeah, it needs to go up to red because red indicates very hot. So are you ready? I'm going to add the bar all the way up to what color? Red. Let's do it. Whoop. There it is. Now, when you look at this graph, can you tell whether it was hotter when it was not shining or when it was shining? Yeah, it's really easy to tell. Graphs are awesome because they make it really easy for us to see information and quickly understand it. We know it was warmer when the light was shining. Now, here's the big question. I'm gonna challenge you to answer this question for me. Why did the rubber mat under the shining light get warmer? Why did that happen? Tell me your ideas.
Wow, those are really interesting ideas. Hmm. Take a look up close of these pictures that I took of the different lamps. This one on the left is the lamp that I had turned on. Make an observation about the light bulb. Now look at this photo on the right. It has a picture of the lamp that I had turned off that was not shining. What do you notice is different about the light bulb in these two pictures? Tell me. Yeah, the light bulb that's turned on is looks really bright. It's giving off light. So we can understand that sunlight makes surfaces feel warm. Just like this bulb on the left is giving off light, it's also giving off heat, just like the sun does. The sun is almost like a giant light bulb. It's not a real light bulb, but it sort of acts like a light bulb because it gives us on the earth light and heat. So surfaces that have sunlight shining on them feel warm. Okay, are you ready to do some moving around? Me too. Let's do this warmer and cooler movement routine. Are you ready? Get your body all ready. Loosen your body up. Loosen your body up. Okay, here's how you do the warmer and cooler movement routine. If I show you a picture of something that is cold, I want you to hold your fingers still, like this, like frozen, like frozen cold. All right, practice that. Show me with your hands what cold looks like. If I show you something that looks cool, I want you to wiggle your fingers slowly. Check that out. Okay. If I show you something warm, I want you to wiggle your fingers quickly like this. Are you wiggling your fingers to show me warm? And if I show you something hot, I want you to wiggle your fingers really fast like this. Okay. Let's practice it one more time. Show me cold. Very good. Show me cool. Ooh, just a little bit of finger wiggle. Okay, we're getting warmer. Show me warm. Ooh, wiggle those fingers quickly. Now show me, are you ready to show me hot? Show me hot. Woo! Lots of energy when we have something hot. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna test you, I'm gonna test your skills. Look at this picture. Does this look cold, cool, warm, or hot? Show me with your fingers. Nice, this is cool. I can tell because look at what the woman is wearing. She's wearing something that it's definitely not hot outside. She would be very, she'd be too hot if she was wearing that sweater outside. And just look at the way the picture looks. It looks cool outside. All right, what about this one? Show me with your hands. Yeah, great job, this is cold. You can tell because the woman in the picture is wearing a hat and a scarf and gloves and she's blowing on her hands to warm them up like that. Have you ever done that before? Yeah, me too, when it's cold in the winter. So this is a cold picture. All right, next one. What do you think? Show me with your hands. Yeah, this is a hot day. Look at the man in the picture. You can see that the sun is shining down on him and we know that the sun gives us heat and he's wiping his forehead. Ooh, he's very, very hot. And he's wearing a short sleeve shirt. He's not wearing a big coat. So I can tell in this picture, this is a hot picture. Woo! Did you do your fingers like a hot picture? Okay, are you ready for the last one? Do you think you can get it? I bet you can. All right, here it is. What do you think? Ooh, okay. I see some people are giving me hot fingers and I see some people are giving me warm fingers. I think you could do either hot or warm. So I'm gonna do hot fingers again. 
I'm going to do warm fingers. I can tell that this picture is either warm or hot because the woman in the picture is wearing a short sleeve shirt. So I know it's not cold outside and she's looking up and she's getting sun down on her face and the sun gives us what? Yeah, it gives us warmth and heat. Awesome job. Now we're going to move on to the next part of our lesson for today. This is going to be a part of the lesson that involves a book. Do you love books? I love books, especially books about science. And this book is called The Handbook of Models. See, scientists read books to gather information. And this type of book is called a reference book. Do you know what makes a reference book special? A reference book you don't have to read from the beginning all the way through to the end. It's not like a story. A reference book is full of information and you could flip to any page in any order and get the information that you want to get. You don't have to read the whole thing. So we're not going to read the whole thing today. We're just going to learn more about how scientists use models. All right, this is called the contents page. Take a look at it. It tells readers what the important sections of the book are and what pages the sections are on. So we want to learn more about how scientists use models. We don't want to read the entire book, so we're going to jump to the right pages that we want to go to. I think we're going to go to pages like 10, 12, and 14. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, nope, we're starting with pages four and five. All right, I'm going to read pages four and five, and I want you to look at the page and read along with me. Also, make sure you look at the pictures. Are you ready? Okay. Some things are hard to investigate. Scientists want to know how the world works. Scientists try to investigate real things to learn more about them, but sometimes they can't investigate the real thing. Why not? Sometimes a thing is too big to observe all at once, like Earth. Sometimes it happens too slowly, like a huge tree growing from a tiny seed. Sometimes it hasn't happened yet, like a new kind of plane flying for the first time. When scientists can't investigate the real thing, they make models. Now let me think about this. Didn't we make a model? We did. We made a model of the way the sun's light heats the earth. Why didn't we just go out and, and go to the sun and investigate the real thing? Yeah, it would be too hard and too dangerous for us to build a rocket and actually go to the sun. So instead, we made a smaller model so that we could study how the sun works, just like scientists. Okay, what is a model? A model is something that scientists make. A model is like the real thing in some ways. It is different from the real thing in other ways. A model is like the real thing in ways that help scientists answer a question. It is different in ways that make it easier to investigate. This is a model of a new kind of plane. The scientist wants to know how well the plane will fly. This is a model of Earth. Earth is very big. Scientists made the model of Earth much smaller than the real thing. This is a model of clouds and weather. Weather is very complicated. Scientists can use a model to make weather simpler. Now, who uses models? Many different kinds of scientists use models. Scientists who investigate plants and animals use models. Scientists who investigate space use models. Scientists who investigate water and land use models. Many other scientists also use models. Models are very useful. These scientists use models to investigate small animals. This scientist uses a model to investigate river plants. This scientist uses a model to investigate how weather is changing around the world. 
These scientists use a model to investigate what happens when you put different chemicals together. And this scientist uses a model to investigate how to drive on Mars. Whoa, that's cool. Models help scientists investigate big things. Some things scientists want to investigate are very big. When something is very big, it's hard to observe the whole thing at once. To investigate big things, scientists often make models. A model can be smaller than the real thing. So check out these pictures. They're showing us this humongous real crater, and then they're showing us a model of a crater that scientists made on a computer to make it easier to study. That's smart. This is a real bay with a bridge going over it. It's humongous. It's so, so giant. So these scientists have made a model of the bay and the bridge so that they can see it and understand it better. Awesome. Okay, so let's add this new word to our vocabulary. Do you know what word it is? It starts with the letter M. Mm. Yeah, it's the word model. A model is something scientists make to answer questions about the real world. Let's review the ways we have worked as scientists. Oh my goodness, look at this. We've learned so much about how to be a scientist. We have observed with our five senses. We have recorded information. We have compared by looking at how things are the same and different. We have communicated with each other and we have made models. Today we're adding reading. Scientists read books to answer questions. So we read books to gather information about models and why scientists use them. Let's count how many different ways we have acted as scientists. Are you ready to count? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have acted like scientists in six different ways. Woohoo! I love to act like a scientist because I am a scientist, and so are you. All right, here's our two big ideas for today. Big idea number one scientists use models to understand how things work. Got it? Great. Here's big idea number two sunlight from the sun warms up surfaces. We learned that by using our model. Woohoo! We are awesome scientists. All right, that's it for lesson 2.2, learning more about models. I'll see you next time for lesson 2.3. Until then, I want you to stay safe and I want you to stay curious. All right, I'll see you next time, scientists. Bye.